सहनावतु सहना भुनाक्तु सहवीरवाहाय तेजस्वी नीतमस्तु मा विद्विषावहाय शांति 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 वैश्वानर प्रवेश्यतिथिभ्राह्मणो ग्रहाथांग शांति कुरवी हर वैवस्वोडक A Brahmana guest enters the house like fire. For him, they accomplish this kind of propitiation. O death, carry water for him. Asha pratikshe sangatang sundritam, cheshta purte putra pasungsh cha sarvan. Ethad brinkte purusha syal pamedhaso yasya nashnan vasati brahmano griye. If a brahmana guest abides in any one's house without food, that brahmana destroys hope and expectation. For the results of holy association and sweet discourse, sacrifices and charities, sons and cattle. of that man of little intelligence namaste so here the scene shifts suddenly from the sacrifice the sacrificial arena where nachiketa's father tells him i send you i give you unto death suddenly we're in the house of yamaraj itself and there's no explanation in the text but shankaracharya explains drawing information from subsequent shlokas that he has been waiting there for 3 days because death was out on some errand and so when death returns his advisors or wives are speaking to him about the danger of having a brahmana in the house without serving him now of course as we discussed in the previous video a real brahmana is a very powerful individual a real brahmana knows brahma or if he doesn't know directly he knows enough about brahma that for all practical purposes he is on the path to realization so this kind of individual is very dangerous in a way because if one encounters such a being without offering the requisite services such as washing the feet offering water uh, a greeting ceremony with a lamp and camphor and incense and like that then one creates offenses and this is true even of powerful beings like death who is actually shiva to hut that he is of noble character extreme nobility and as we get into this more and more we'll see i mean his nobility his ethics are extremely admirable because even though nachiketa is just a boy he treats him as a full-fledged brahmana i mean uh if he's more than 11 or 12 years old he's already had the sacred thread ceremony he already knows and practices the gayatri mantra and gayatri is shakti she is the gateway to liberation so uh anyone who is practicing this is certainly on the path well on the way to enlightenment and deserves great respect and if we don't give that respect if we omit the requisite ceremonies and so on the practices then we're going to be in trouble we're going to be in trouble and what it says here is that 
Uh, if a Brahmana guest resides in anyone's house without food, he diminishes or destroys the results of all pious activities, all auspicious activities meant for our future welfare. So sacrifices, study of the Vedas, chanting of mantras, and so on like that will have no effect, or they'll have even negative effects, unless we properly treat the brahmanas, the self-realized beings, who embody those mantras and those ceremonies and the practices that are supposed to give bhakti, devotion, to the supreme. So what they say here, first of all, is that to serve a Brahmana guest is a kind of propitiation. Propitiation of what? Brahman itself. The Brahmana, I mean, what does the word mean, right? <laughs> it means someone who is of Brahman. Really, literally, a son of Brahman, of Brahma. See? So, a Brahmana, when they appear, I don't mean just a guy with a thread on his shoulder. I mean someone who has actually realized Brahman. When they appear within our region or realm or whatever, our, our responsibility, our range of uh, things we should take care of, then it's our responsibility to treat him properly. If we don't, there is going to be consequences. So the advisors or the wives of death are saying to him, look, this boy has been here for three days without food or water. You have to take care of him or there's going to be consequences, even for you. And although that's not exactly true for Shiva, I mean, Shiva can do anything, right? And he'll deal with the consequences. <laughs> he is the consequence of any pious act, any act of self-realization. So death is considered a very high being. Death is, after all, inevitable. Huh? Well, they say like death and taxes. <laughs> He's inevitable. Death is going to come for all of us. So we better get to know him. We better get to understand him and learn how to deal with him in friendship. This means, at first of all, we have to develop a high regard for death. What is death doing? What is he teaching us? If we regard him as an enemy, who is going to take away all the things that we're attached to and clinging to, <laughs> then we won't get it. We'll wind up right back in this samsara in another womb. And who knows what conditions we're going to be born in, what our karma is going to be like if we resist death. But if we see death as liberation, if we see death as correcting our misunderstandings about existence, about life, about reality. If we see that death is teaching us an important lesson, that you are not this body, you are not really connected with any of these things that you think are yours or yourself. See, if we take those lessons early before death actually comes, then when he comes, we're going to be on cordial terms with him. We're going to be at ease with him, even regard him as a friend. And of course, because death is Shiva, as we treat him, he treats us. He responds in kind to whatever our attitudes are. So if we treat him as an enemy, if we treat him as a severe judge, huh, then 
he will take up those roles and <laughs> exhibit those attitudes toward us as well. He will reciprocate whatever game we want to play. So the best attitude toward death then is like Nachiketa. See him as a grantor of boons. See him as a benefactor, a teacher. See him as a noble god. See, and because he sees death like that, death reciprocates toward him like that. And here we begin just to see a little bit of his nobility, that his advisors tell him, hey, you better treat this Brahmin boy right, <laughs> or we're all going to have to pay the price. This is the fundamental understanding of spiritual advancement, that when you encounter a being who has spiritual realization, you should serve them. You should treat them well. You should invite them and give them all comforts. And this is because the one who reveals Brahman in this world is the greatest benefactor because he is opening the doorway. He is, he is opening the gateway to the higher existence, the higher dimensions. So to serve him is a kind of propitiation for our sins, for our mistakes, our misunderstandings. He will certainly see and correct any way that we are in error, any way that we have missed the boat, huh? that we have misunderstood. And so this is important for everyone to understand. And we should follow the example of death, that when we meet an extraordinary being, even though he may be in the guise of an ordinary human, what to speak of someone like death himself? We should become very humble. We should become like a servant and offer them all kinds of accommodations. This is the etiquette. And this is what leads to higher planets. This is what leads to ultimate self-realization. Because being pleased with us, the self-realized souls will then share willingly and abundantly their realizations. And this is what leads to enlightenment. So this is absolutely the path that we should follow in life. And like death, See the presence of a brahmana as an opportunity, not an obligation, although his advisors are kind of presenting it that way, but as a great opportunity to amass punya, pious credit, and make advancement on the path of self-realization towards complete enlightenment. Aung Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum Aum Namah Shivaya.